Welcome to the screencast on dietary fiber by Ms. Chen. Now, what on earth uh, is dietary fiber? Now, dietary fiber is really non-nutrient. In other words, even though it's, uh, it's supposed to be uh, cellulose, okay, uh, supposed to be under carbohydrate, it cannot be digested by human beings. So, in technically, it's not really uh, providing us any nutrients like carbohydrate, protein, fats, all this. Now, it's mainly found in fruits and vegetables. And because it's non-digestible, it means it cannot be digested by human beings, it helps us to remove waste. That means our feces. Okay? And it helps us to feel fuller for a longer period of time. Now, some examples here, like uh, navy, uh, navy beans, split peas, lentils, chickpeas, bran flax, whole wheat, you can see there's quite a number of fiber in just grams in just this amount. So one cup, all right, like one cup navy bean, 19.1 gram of fiber. Uh, whole wheat, you get 6.3 gram of fiber. Okay, and recommended daily value are 30 grams of fiber a day. Now, how the, does dietary fiber remove waste? Now, I want you to imagine Alright, we're watching a short video of how digestion goes, by the way. Uh, is that dietary fiber will absorb water. So let's take uh let's pretend that this is well your dietary fiber and it's come to a point of being a stool or feces in your body. So what happens is that when water is added, water is added, it will start to increase in bulk or size. So this is how it helps to remove waste to prevent constipation. It needs water to form the dietary fiber in order to help remove our waste that's collected from the body and placed inside here and to remove it. Now, constipation. What on earth is constipation? Now, if you have constipation, now this is a Bristol stool, Bristol chart. In other words, um, this is really your stool. Or your pool actually now what happens is that um, if you're having constipation most likely your feces will be like this separate hard lumps like nuts okay that means you have to use quite a lot of strength just to pass one bit out one bit out one bit out okay so depending on the amount of water your most likely type 4 and uh, maybe type 5 or this, this will be your better ones, okay, where um, let me see your feces had enough water to, to be passed out easily, all right, this is still a bit hard, all right, and this is when you have diarrhea, diarrhea, that means you're totally watered, you, if you have very severe diarrhea, you might have dehydration. Now, where can we get fiber? We have soluble fiber, soluble fiber means it helps to lower our blood, um, our uh, cholesterol level, so it helps to reduce rates of heart diseases and all this, and hypertension, and insoluble fiber, which is where it prevents, help to pass out our feces, so insoluble fiber belongs to the part where we talk about uh, helping us to prevent constipation, so as you can see, soluble fiber comes from fruits, such as apples, pears, okay, some beans, and insoluble fiber will come from carrots, uh, pepper, tomatoes, uh, cucumber, and potatoes. So this has cellulose. All right, cellulose actually uh, helps to contribute to this indigestibility. Now, what happens when you have constipation? If eaten too little, okay, we drank drink too little water and dietary fiber, constipation may occur. means we have difficulty passing out the feces, so we have to use a lot of force to push it out. So what happened is that long-term constipation will actually result in hemorrhoids or pulse. So let's take a look what exactly is hemorrhoid or pulse. Now there will be this word here uh, for sample only. Please ignore that. Please look past that and just concentrate on the video. So pulse will show you like if you keep having to force out and it might, have, uh, it might cause us to have surgery just to remove this pulse and it's very very painful as a lot of people can uh, confirm as they went through the surgery before.
Your doctor may recommend a hemorrhoidectomy to remove your hemorrhoids if they do not respond to more conservative treatment. Hemorrhoidal veins are blood vessels within the walls of the rectum and anal canal. Hemorrhoids, also known as piles, occur when these veins become swollen and the tissue around them becomes inflamed. A swollen vein near the opening of the anal canal is called an external hemorrhoid. A swollen vein within the rectum is called an internal hemorrhoid. Internal hemorrhoids are classified by how advanced they are. First-degree internal hemorrhoids are those that always remain inside the rectum. Second-degree internal hemorrhoids will extend outside the rectum during a bowel movement and then return to the inside of the rectum on their own. Third-degree internal hemorrhoids extend outside the rectum during a bowel movement and then must be pushed back inside the rectum. Fourth-degree internal hemorrhoids always remain outside the rectum and cannot be pushed back in. Before a hemorrhoidectomy, you may be given local or general anesthesia. For general anesthesia, you will be given medications to put you to sleep through a breathing mask or through an IV line. A breathing tube will be inserted through your mouth and into your windpipe to help you breathe during the operation. Your surgeon will begin by using a scalpel, electrocautery, or laser to make an incision in the tissue around the hemorrhoid to expose the swollen vein. Your surgeon may tie off the swollen vein in order to keep it from bleeding when it is removed. Your surgeon will then remove the swollen vein and inflamed tissue. Your wound may be left open or your surgeon may suture it closed. Finally, your surgeon will place medicated bandages over the wound to aid in healing and protect from infection. The procedure generally takes about an hour. After your procedure, your breathing tube will be removed. You will be instructed to eat a high-fiber diet and drink plenty of fluids to help prevent constipation during your recovery, which usually lasts two weeks to two months. Your doctor may recommend warm baths, medications, and or stool softeners to make you more comfortable in the days after your procedure. Most people are able to return home the day of the procedure, but some will need to stay in the hospital for one to two days. After you return home, you should call your doctor immediately if you experience fever, excessive pain, drainage from your wound, redness, or swelling. Now, where can we get dietary fiber? There are a few places that we can get dietary fiber from the fruit group. So, mainly fruits and vegetables as usual, as well as grains. Because whole wheat grain can also contribute a lot of dietary fiber. Okay, fruits and vegetables, definitely your cellulose, all this comes from there. However, remember that, that if you eat too much dietary fiber, it might result in having vitamins and minerals being bind. That means uh, they will take this vitamin and minerals, put together with your feces, and they will be removed as well. Okay, so you can't eat too much of this dietary fiber. All right? As unusual, Singapore Dietary Guidelines, uh, it will apply to here. Eat more fruits and vegetables to prevent constipation. So add vegetables to your meat dishes, snack on fruits and vegetables, drink more fruit juices. And we'll come to the review. So I'll see you next time for the next screencast. This is Miss Chen. Pause the video here, answer these questions, refer to your textbook or refer to the notes or the slides here. Thank you.